time in YouTube and welcome to our very first Pokemon TCG battle on the channel and I couldn't have had a better opponent than my girlfriend Lady Eon. She's gonna be the first opponent for Muse Night March and we're gonna be doing a best two out of three for this event so we're gonna get straight into this match she knows already that she's ready to go we're just gonna hit that okay sending that good old application to say hey let's battle and here we go guys game number one she is playing I do believe she is playing her guard of war deck now please be understandable she doesn't have all the cards in the world uh, we are gonna win the coin toss which is great for us we are gonna play second that way I can attack first turn uh, so she doesn't have shamans and stuff like that just yet but she over time, as you guys see her develop, hopefully she will be able to get all these extra cards that she needs. So we have a Pumpkaboo as our lead and a Bronzor for the back, which is beautiful for us. We have a double colorless energy, we can go for Shaman, there's a bunch of stuff we can do. Uh, she starts out with a Xerneas, a Gardevoir, and a Spritzy, so she's actually really set up here. Uh, she's got all the Pokemon that she does want right off the bat. And with her getting turn one, we do stop her from getting the Geomancy off right now. Uh, she passes the turn over, and we get a VS Seeker, which isn't too necessary right now. I will go for the Trainer's Mail. And the only thing I have is the Sycamore. But I'll be able to Ultra Ball that away. We'll go for the Ultra Ball, tossing out the Sycamore and the Steel Energy, because I don't need the Steel Energy just yet. That is there again for the ability to Bronzor back up. I can start attaching it to Pokemon on the bench. We are going to go with the Energy Drop. A level ball. And we are going to get ourselves a... Do we get a Mew? Do we get a Mew? Or do we get a Joltik? Let's get a Joltik. Get one beautiful little creature little bug on the bench. We're gonna throw that shaman up and we're gonna net ourselves five more cards with that V with the sycamore and the discard. Ooh, that that is a good bench. So we get the Mew. We go for a battle compressor which we will get rid of where are them lamp pins? One, two, three lamp pins right there. They're gone. We're gonna go with another battle compressor here. So we'll be able to get one, two, and that last Lampent. That way we do not draw it. All of them are gone. Beautiful. Uh, we will go with the level ball. Hmm. Let's go with the level ball. See what I can grab. I can grab another Mew. That way I can get it out into the active position. Well, under the bench, not worrying about it too much. And I'm going to sacrifice my double colorless energy for the Sycamore. This lets me grab even more cards. Ditching the double colorless. And I'm set up for the next turn. I do get my Dimension Valley, which is very crucial. I go for the Acrobike. I get an Ultra Ball. Ditch the Acrobike. Ditch the Dimension Valley. If we are even going to attach a Fighting Fury Belt to this Pumpkaboo, we're going to go for a Night March. This is going to knock out 130 damage right on the nose, which means we are in a fantastic position pulling a Shaman. I don't even think our opponent needs too much time. This is uh, unfortunate for her. She's got to decide which is her lead. It's going to be the Spritzy. We had a perfect lead, guys. Like That was insane. The amount of damage. We got everything we needed. There's a Gardevoir Spirit Link, so she'll be able to go for the Mega Evolution now without losing her turn. Here's a Sycamore on her end. So she loses a Shauna and a VS Seeker. But the question is, did she draw something that she really needed? She got another Gardevoir, which is another scary card for us. But I can just Ultra Ball the two Joltics away, pull up a Shaman, do what I need to do. So we're going to go for the Ultra Ball. We're going to sacrifice two of our Joltics. And we are going to grab ourselves a Pumpkaboo, because it's the only Pokemon left in the deck. Um, I 
I think I'll go for the Lysander on the active Gardevoir. And we will hit it with the Night March. With the additional Joltix, it will be enough to take it out. Taking two prizes here. A Bronzong and the Battle Compressor. That Bronzong is crucial because now I can actually attach energy to Mew. That steel energy I had in the discard pile, I can now get that back. So that is another nice thing about this. We see a Lysander pulling out the Shaman, which is a fantastic play on our opponent's part. She, uh, she knew that that thing was a threat, and I can't do anything about that. But we'll go with the... Bronzor, Bronzong Evolution. I will go with the AZ. Scoop up my little shaman buddy here. Put back our Pumpkaboo. Go for a Battle Compressor. I can get rid of these two steel energy because I don't need them. And I can ditch the Skyla. I only have one double colorless left in the deck. But I can go for a Metal Lynx here, going for one of those fantastic Steel Energies, and attach it to our Mew, who can now Dimension Valley into a Night March for one, so it is actually all set up ready to go. We will go for the Knockout. Do we go for the Knockout? I'm going to go for an Acrobike, just to double check. I get a Double Colorless Energy. I have not played said Double Colorless Energy, so I will set up the Mew in the back as well. Go for a Shaman Drop which will draw me three more cards. I do net the VS Seeker, but I do not have a supporter now. I will be going for that Night March to knock out this Spritzy, but again, I'm in range of being able to take this game, and unfortunately for my opponent, and unfortunately for me, uh, this is a very quick first round. Hopefully she can be able to take this back in game two, or at least throw uh, some damage our way. Because unfortunately I have taken out all of her attackers as she played. We see a level ball, so she's looking for something small. And depending on how she plays this... Ooh, there's a Cottony. Now if she Mega Evolves here... She may be able to live an attack. I'm not too sure. Not too sure. Now the Life Leap will heal this Pokemon the same amount of damage it took. Unfortunately it's currently at full HP so it will not be able to benefit from that. Second energy drop onto the Gardevoir. And at the look of it we might be able to take this game because she can't actually knock out our Pumpkaboo. She's going to do 20. We have 100 HP so the Shining Wind attack would have been able to knock us out. But we did keep her at bay by Lysandering out the active, already set up one. We're what, like turn 4 in and I've got a whopping 11 cards left? I played a lot of cards turn 1. Uh, we are seeing the Bronzong hit the active position this time. And it's a life leap coming our way. We're going to be taking 20. Go for a trainer's mail, just to double check. I can go for the acro bike. Let I can't see anything past that. Hmm. Well, we'll go for the acro bike. Now I do have a floatstone in this deck. Whether or not it's prized, ah, there it is. Don't need to go from too much. So we will go for the floatstone onto the bronze song, and I'll be able to just retreat, go into our pump kaboo, and we're gonna wrap up this first game here. Unfortunately, it was very one-sided. That probably wasn't too nice of us. But we're going to see if she can come back in the second game. So just hold on to your horses. We're about to get into that second match and see if we can go two for two. Or if she can make a huge comeback and at least take us out, you know, one game. Hopefully. Alright guys, going into the game, second game. I'm keeping the same music throughout the entire match this time. Just to, you know, keep it simple. Uh, she gets the coin toss again, but because she won, uh, well, she gets to choose anyway, she's probably going to go second. Yep, lets me take my turn first, which is a fantastic play on her part, because that 
that one turn mattered huge. I will be going for the Pumpkaboo lead only because uh, Joltik can easily be one shot depending on her active. So we have the Pumpkaboo, we have a Joltik, we have an all right hand. We see the Xerneas, another Xerneas. I'm going to probably go for the level ball here. And I want to get out of Bronzor. Get it out of the deck. I might be a little slower this turn, but I'm also just needing to set up. So we're going to go for the double colorless energy drop. We'll go for the fighting stadium. And that's about all I can do. But I am set up to attack next turn. Except I do not have anything in my discard pile, so the Night March attack will do absolutely nothing unless I can get an item draw. We see a Fairy Garden. This is why I did not play the Dimension Valley. I can now take out that Fairy Garden with the Dimension Valley and go for the attack if able. Unfortunately for my opponent, she only got four cards off that Verge, which is not very good for her. Trust me, I'm not against letting her win, because this is my girlfriend we're talking about. I don't want to just go all out and kill her. That first game was kind of one-sided. But here she is. She's pretty much all set up. She's got a lot more going for this game, and I'm going a lot slower. Uh, I'll be able to go for the evolution here. I'm going to go for the Dimension Valley, removing that Fairy Stadium from play. But unfortunately, I can't do anything. I'm gonna go for Night March, and I don't do any damage. So, our opponent gets the opportunity here. I had a dead hand. I'm not out of this, by all means. She's gotta take six prizes, and I've got three big ones right here waiting for her. She goes for a Shauna here. She gets to shuffle her hand back in, draw five more cards. And we're about to see, can she take this back? She goes for a level ball. So this will get her her aromatise. Yep. Now her, what I would say is the big play, it might waste a turn, but she should bring all those energies onto the Xerneas and get this pump kaboot out of here. Because she can see my hand is in a very bad position. So I'm interested to see what she does. She goes for an Ultra Ball. Now what is she going for? She discards a Birch and a Fairy Energy. Goes for the full art Guard of War, guys. That is an amazing card. I love the design of it. It's an amazing, pretty, gorgeous thing. I'm interested to see what the new Guard of War is going to look like full art, because you can pretty much guarantee that new Guard of War coming out in Steam Siege will have a full art. So will Volcanion, in fact, and that is even more interesting. We see the Fairy Transfer. We see a Fairy Energy onto the Guard of War. Is she getting all of them? Nope, that's it. Just the one. Just the one. We go for the Geomancy. Netting a Fairy Energy onto the Gardevoir and onto the Xerneas. So we'll have two energies on each. Now we're in a bit of a pickle. This is more, more onto her side of the field. Unfortunately, I keep drawing a dead hand, which is not good for Night March. This deck is not working in this game. Definitely had a dead hand. Definitely had a dead hand. But again, it's all fair and dandy. She got her Fairy Garden, so she got rid of my Dimension Valley. Goes for the Professor Sycamore. I got a full hand again. We see a fair Energy drop onto the Gardevoir. Goes for the Spirit Link. And if she has it, she can go for the Mega Evolution right now and actually take out our Pumpkaboo. Which will set us really far behind. Like, I mean really far behind. There's a lot of cards that we can get right now that can put us back into this game, but unfortunately, I think we might be out of a disadvantage. Now with that Fairy Garden up, she can transfer herself out, she can switch, switch that Xerneas out for the Gardevoir, which is exactly what she's doing. She can go for that Shiny win, knock out the Pump Kaboo, and that's one major threat off the table for her. My Double Colorless Energy is gone, my Fighting Fury Belt is gone, my Pump Kaboo is gone. Now that doesn't mean too much, because I have a Joltik coming up. But, that is a lot of power from me. I can at least go for an Ultra Ball here, get rid of this Lampin and a Via Seeker, and I'm going to be able to draw me a Shaman. Which will get me back into this game. A little late, I'll admit, but we're at least getting back into this game. Yes please, I need as many cards as I can get. Uh, we do have a Double Colorless Energy here. 
we're gonna go for the Acro Bike, which will net us the Ultra Ball. Beautiful! I can get rid of both the Joltik and the Pumpkin Boot in my hand. So we're gonna do. We are going to do just that. And I might. I'm gonna go for the. What's my other trainer? I should go for the Shaman because I do need more card draw. So I'm gonna go for the Shaman. Gonna go for a Trainer's Mail. Which will net us the Battle Compressor, which is amazing for us right now. That is beautiful. We have not supported yet, so hopefully we can just net a supporter. Get rid of these Lampants. I might be able to go for a Steel Energy now that I'm thinking about it. You know what? Let's get one of those Steel Energies. So there we go. We hit up some uh, great attackers there. We're going to go for the Double Colorless Energy Drop onto the Joltik. And we're going to drop the Shaman. Uh, yes, please. More cards. That is all we need. It's just more cards. We got a Mew. We got another Battle Compressor. So now I can VS Seeker into anything I want. I'm going to get rid of these two Steel. And... The threat is in front of me. But I think the big one is going to be the Lysander. We're going to pull out the Lysander. I'll save the Ultra Ball for now. We're going to grab that Metal Links and attach a Steel Energy to the Mew. So this way, when Mew, or if Joltik goes down next turn, which he probably will considering she's still got all those energies in the back, I'll be able to set up my Mew and go for it. So, we are going to go for that Night March. Do we have enough to take this thing out? We do not. We're only at 120 damage, so we are not in the position to be attacking. This Gardevoir is a lot of... It's really bulky. Really bulky. We see a level ball come from my opponent. She's probably getting that Whimsicott, which is really bad for us because she can actually just... This is awesome. She can throw that Whimsicott down as long and transfer an energy over to it. Switch the two out and fully heal her Gardevoir so it's ready for Mega Evolution. And I think that's exactly what she's doing. There's the transfer to the Whimsicott. She's going to be able to switch right now. This is what she should do. This is what I would do in that position. There's the switch. She's going for that Windy Mischief which will knock out Mega Joltik. And fully heal Gardevoir. So we're forced to come up here with the Mew, which is really nice for us. I will go for the Dimension Valley here. We will go for... Let's see what I got on the Trainer's Mail. Dimension Valley AZ. AZ might be the best play, because I can withdraw one of the Shamans. which looks like it might be the best thing for me to do. Let's draw one of those shamans back up. So we got it back. I'm going to drop the double colorless energy on the Joltik. And I'm going to play the shaman. This way I can get four cards. My deck is pretty much barren once again. And we get a Fighting Fury Belt. Now what's nice is I do have enough, hopefully, in the next little bit to take out that Gardevoir. Uh, I do have enough to take out the Whimsicott that is in front of me. I'm going to go with the Ultra Ball. No. And we're going to sacrifice both our supporters. We'll grab out the Joltik. Mm, we'll grab the Pumpkaboo and get it out onto the bench. This way we have another attacker. We are going to go for that Night March and it'll knock out this Whimsicott. We are currently at 150, so we're not quite there yet. But we do get our first prize and it's an Acro Bike. With only 13 cards left in the deck, we don't need too much of that stuff. Here comes up that Gardevoir. Gardevoir says, hey, remember that shining wind? I can knock you out. 
She's in a very good position right now. If she can get that Mega, she'll be out of range of us being able to knock her out, and that'll be a very scary position. Gardevoir being fully healed, getting a knockout with a Whimsicott. She's playing very well. Very, very well. Now here comes an Ultra Ball. She is aiming for that Mega Gardevoir. She's aiming for that Mega Gardevoir. Here it comes Mega Gardevoir. It's not the full art. I think she has one though. I think she's got a full art in that deck too. I'm not too sure. Anyway, we do have the Mega Gardevoir show up. That Brilliant Arrow is going to do 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 150 damage. So unfortunately for us, none of our Pokemon can handle this. None of them. We are going to have to throw up the Joltik now. And we got a double colorless energy drop, so I'll be able to set up Pumpkaboo. And even if that Dimension Valley goes now, I'm going to set up the Steel Energy on the Pumpkaboo. And this way, I'm fully set up with a 3, uh, three Energy uh, Night March. We are going to go for the Acro Bike, and we get a Level Ball and Battle Compressor. Let's go for the Level Ball. I'm not going to use it. I should have gone for the Battle Compressor now that I'm thinking about it. Now that I'm thinking about it. Either way, we are going to go for that Night March. We're not going to be able to knock it out. We're at 140 HP, but Pumpkaboo will be able to come in and clean it out in the next turn. Whew, this is, this is actually a very scary match in the position I'm in. I had a very bad start. I'm still being able to, just due to the one prize takeout, ooh, if she's got, well, she can't play the Whimsicott right now. But if she can switch out, that might be the best play, because her Gardevoir is going to be her saving grace. But we'll see what she's about to do. Does she go for the knockout? Because if she does, unfortunately, Pumpkaboo will take this thing out. And I'm not too threatened by much else. Here comes the Fairy Garden. What's she gonna do? We do have a Dimension Valley, though, to counter that last Fairy Garden, because I believe that's the last one. Ah, uh, Fairy Garden. Nope, she's only played two, so that's only the third one. Here comes the Xerneas. Does she go for the Rainbow Spear, or does she go for a Geomancy? If she goes for the Geomancy, that might not be good, because... I have Lysander in the back, so I'll be able to pull that out. It's always nice to have a Lysander in the discard, because now your main attacker is going to be gone. So there are some, as much as it's nice to have those energies, I am not threatened by your Gardevoir anymore. So via Seeker, it's going to come through. We're going to pull out that full, full art Lysander, throw up the Dimension Valley, because we do not want her having that good old uh, fairy garden. We're going to pull up that Gardevoir and we are going to eat it. So level ball. I'm not going to play it. We will go for the Night March here. Take out this Mega Gardevoir. 140 damage. And we're going to consume two more prizes. Pumpkaboo and Trainer's Mail. Now what she could have been doing is she could have been setting herself up for the next turn, but she should have gone for the knockout with the Rainbow Spear. Because now I'm in range of winning as well. Especially when I drew that Pumpkaboo. That gave me a lot of momentum. Uh, she did drop another Gardevoir. So that actually puts me in range if I can get another VS Seeker. I can go for the Lysander, pull it up. And we might have this game still. All that work for her. Like She is putting in a fantastic game. This game, so much better. She's at 13 cards. We're both really close to the end of this one. But the question is, what does she go for? She does not want to bring up that Gardevoir right now. She does not want to bring up that Gardevoir. We have the Joltik ready to go. She's very transferring, what, one energy to the Xerneas? To go for the Rainbow Spear? Good play, good play. The Aromatisse is now done. They're going to go for that Rainbow Spear. 100 damage, Joltik is not going to survive that. 
So she's going to go down to two. As we have to bring up our new Pumpkaboo. Boo! We got a Battle Compressor, which I don't quite need. I need a VS Seeker. So let's go for the Trainer's Mail. No. No VS Seeker. So we'll take the Acrobike. I got a level ball. I may not grab anything, but I want to know if there's a VS Seeker left. It, there is not. We're going to say done. I need to start energizing this Pumpkaboo as quick as I can. Uh, I got a little bit of cat hair in my mouth. I have to take out the threat that's in front of me, unfortunately, so the Cernius is going to go down. I'll be able to tie up with the prize count. But if I can pull a VS Seeker, I do not. I get a Sycamore. That's not a good card for me right now. Our opponent's in a very good position, but at the same point, she's not. She knows I've got two attackers left, but she doesn't know how I'm going to play them. She can come in, knock out my Pumpkaboo, or she can come in and stall, but at the same point. So here comes the Gardevoir. If she has a Spirit Link, and if she has the Mega Evolution, I think we've lost. Because she's got three energies here. There's a fourth. She can still transfer. There's a fairy garden. Gets rid of our Dimension Valley. Which makes it very hard for us to attack with that last Pumpkaboo. She's going to go for that Sycamore. Putting her hand down to what? Three? Uh, what is it? Five cards. We see the Gardevoir Spirit Link. Does she get the Mega? She gets the Mega! And does she have that energy? She has enough to take out Pumpkaboo right now. I do not think we're in the range of taking out this next opponent. I actually think she just took this game. I think she took this game. She just needs to transfer one energy over. Which she's about to do. Put it on. Brilliant Error is going to do 369, 12, 120 damage, which will even knock out my Shamans at this point. So here comes the Pumpkaboo, where she is down to one prize card. And if I can pull a double colorless energy right now, that will be awesome. Because I think I'm in range. I get a target whistle. We're going to go for that target whistle. Pull out the Gardevoir. I know you guys are probably saying, what are you doing? Let's go for the Acrobike. Trainer's Mail. I'm searching for a double colorless. Is it in here? Acrobike. I do believe she may have us here. I should have gone for the Battle Compressor, because I only have one card left. There's no... There is nothing in there anyway. It's just a Joltik. I have to end my turn. My friends! She has defeated Night March! She just needs to go for the attack, and that will be game number two. We have to go into a game number three here. After that stellar performance we had in game number one, we just could not come back in game number two. So she does take over. She has game number two. We have to go into a tiebreaker here. So we'll be right back, and hopefully we'll see who can win. Night March or Garden 4? You guys put it in the comment section below right now. Who wins? And we'll be right back. Final game. We're hitting up, and we'll see just how it goes. Uh, she gets the coin toss here. And, uh, yeah. She's going to flip it. I lose this coin toss. So she's going to make me play first one more time, which I'm all right with. We didn't actually talk about coin toss rules. But uh, that is all right by me. I am going to lead the Pumpkaboo. 
Because again, that was the best play for me last turn. I have a lot more going for me this time. I actually have a supporter. I have some other cards that can get, get a bunch of stuff out of my hand. So hopefully, ooh, ooh. That is the worst hand she started with. We're going to start off with a double colorless energy. We're going to go for a trainer's mail here. And all I can go for is a Dimension Valley and a Lysander. So I'll grab that Dimension Valley. I may have to play it right now just because I will be ending this turn. But it's better than nothing. Uh, I'll be going for that Ultra Ball. I'm going to sacrifice my VS Seeker and my Acro Bike. It is worth it to get a Shaman right now. This way I can get more cards. A lot more things going on. Both Shamans are in the deck, which is beautiful. So I know that. I don't have to worry about Prize Shaman. We're going to draw back up to six. There's all those extra cards. Uh, we see a Lysander, an AZ, an N, Fighting Fury Belt. Throw that on the Pumpkaboo. Make him a little bit more bulky. Uh, we will play the Joltik. Go for the Acro Bike. And we'll take the level ball. This way it, dis it forces the discard on the Lampant. We'll go for a Mew. We have not actually used Mew. Well, we used it once. Here comes Mew. We're going to put it right up there in the active position. Or not in the active, but on the bench. And now I'm going to go for an N. I get a Bronzor get my AZ back, I got another Fighting Fury Belt. I've got a nice little bit of stuff going on here. So we're gonna just drop that Fighting Fury Belt onto the Mew. And I'm gonna save that level ball for next turn. But that is all I can do. It is only the first turn after all. So she is now able to draw. We're gonna see what she may have benefited from that N, if anything. We do see a Spritzy and a Cottony. We see an Ultra Ball come through, so she might be looking for a Xerneas. She ditched a Professor Birch and an Ult oh, and a Fairy Energy. She did Ultra Ball. So we're about to see, does she get any, what is she gonna go for? Gardevoir or Xerneas? She goes for the Gardevoir. She knows that the attacking is probably a little bit more crucial, especially with Spritzy up in the active role. Now, if it were me, I would have probably switched. Spritz is a little bit more important to my strategy for fairies, so I probably would have had Cottony as my lead. But we're about to see, does that really matter? Does it pay off? Sorry about that, guys. Uh, here comes the Sycamore. So she's discarding that fairy garden and that, water, that fairy energy. I don't know why she discarded the fairy energy. She's going to pass that turnover, and now we can start shredding her team. That is the idea here. We're going to go with the double colorless energy on the Mew. We're going to go with the... Hmm. Well, I'm going to go for the Lava Ball and hopefully get my Bronze on, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Get the Bronze on, get that Evolution off. And now I'll be able to go for the Sycamore, which will discard the AZ for later for easy pickup with the Via Seekers. And I got rid of the Joltik, which will help increase my damage output. So we're going to go for a Battle Compressor here. We're going to get rid of a Lampant, Pumpkaboo, a Joltik. That's it. That's it. Okay, done. We're going to go for another Battle Compressor, but this time I'm going to hit up the Steel. One, two, three. And I think that's all I'm going to hit up. I'm at 15 cards, so I want to be able to move fast now. Uh, Night March goes for the attack. We're doing 110 damage, so we're not in KO range yet. Ultra Ball. We see the Xerneas come up. Now, did we discard a Lysander? No, we did not. Lysander has not been discarded yet. We see a Fairy Energy drop onto the Xerneas. This is not exactly a good position for her. Um, we are in a lot better position than she is right now. Especially if I can pull out that uh, Gardevoir EX, take out her main attacker. I'm not too threatened after that. 
Uh, she does get the evolution on the Whimsicott, which as we've seen before is a very scary card to have. She gets the Gardevoir Spirit Link, but she goes for the Geomancy, which will net one more Fairy Energy on both of her benched Pokémon. Uh, we do get a Target Whistle, which she only has a Spritzy right now anyway, so I don't really want to take it out. It's not going to benefit me any. Um, we're going to go for a Trainer's Mail, see what we can get here. Sycamore and a Dimension Valley. I'd like to have the Dimension Valley in my hand, just in case something happens to the active one. So we're going to take that. We are going to drop a double colorless energy onto the Joltik as we go for the Metal Links, which we will also set up on our Mew. There it is. Now Mew has a three energy Night March, just in case something happens. I like to be prepared. Uh, we are not in range, though, of knocking out this. I do not believe we have two, three, four, five. There's a lot of Night Marchers in the discard pot, or er, in the prize counter, which is not good for us. So, do I only do 120? Do I really do only 110? That's two, four, six, eight, ten. Plus the 10. That's that's legit all I'm doing. So I'm not going to waste any more cards. We're just going to go for that 110 damage. That Whimsicott is going to come in and knock out our Pumpkaboo though. But that'll put us in our damage range, which is actually a benefit for us. I don't have a problem with that. So the Whimsicott will come in. And hopefully that'll be enough to take it out. It'll heal off the Xerneas, but if my Pumpkaboo goes down, not a problem. That's just one more big attacker for me. Because I've got two massive ones sitting here now, the Joltik and the Mew. And the Dimension Valley is not doing too, too much. Again, I can set up the Joltik on the other side now as well because of the Steel Energy in the discard pile. So, I'm not too threatened there. Uh, just so you guys remember, I don't know if I did mention it in the, di uh, in the deck analysis, but that Steel Energy helps us with like Pokemon with like Bronzong or anybody who has special energy problems. It's nice to have that ability to attack with just basics. Doesn't happen often in a Night March deck. Now she is going for a level ball here, probably looking for a- oh she got another Whimsicott! She's hoping to evolve that secondary Cottony and hopefully get herself another Switcheroo attacker. Now she does need to get herself out of the active, which she can't do just quite yet. She has an Ultra Ball, switches or er, discards the Shauna and a Birch, and she gets a Mega Gardevoir, which she'll be able to play, hopefully going in for some major damage. Here it is, Mega Gardevoir. Whew. I apologize for that, guys. The question is, what is her best strategy here? She cannot switch, she does not have a Fairy Garden, she did discard one earlier in the game, which may have been really crucial. So, I got cat hair on my tongue. I've got one of these cats, she's got a ton of fur, and it because of it being summertime right now, she is just molting everywhere. Like, I don't know if you guys can see it on my hands, but I got cat hair everywhere. Uh, she ended up going for the Geomancy, which is a cool attack, but I don't know if that was the right play. I'm gonna go for the Trainer's Mail, see if I can get that Lysander out of- yeah, there it is. So I'm gonna actually take out this Xerneas right now, because I know the Whimsicots don't do anything Unless those that Gardevoir has a lot of damage already on it, so this will put us this will put us down to the four prize range, and there's a, one of our Lampants, so I'll be able to Ultra Ball it away. I don't think there's any more Pokemon in the uh, deck other than maybe another Mew. <sighs> this Gardevoir is a threat. Uh, we do see another energy on the cot or on the Whimsicott as an evolution does happen. But all she's got really of a threat is this Mega Gardevoir. 
as she goes for 210 damage against the Pumpkaboo. And we are going to set up our Joltik. No, we'll set up our Mew. We want to save those Joltiks. As much as it's going to help our damage output, it's not really quite crucial. Uh, now, here's my play. She can take out all my attackers with this thing. And she's going to keep fully healing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Lysander out one of them. This is going to stop her from getting an extra kill and an extra heal on that thing. We are going to go with the... We don't need to play... Oh, yes, I do want to play the Ultra Ball. Discarding the Lampant, and I'll discard the Sycamore, because I do not plan to play it anytime soon, especially when I only have 10 cards left in hand. I'm going to grab the Mew, get another attacker up. Uh, I will be going for the Metal Links on the Mew, because again, I can benefit from Dimension Valley. The fact that Night uh, Joltik's Night March only costs 2 will make it so Mew's only costs 1. And I will go for the Night March here, taking out this Whimsicott. Two energies less for the Gardevoir to play with, and we're up to 150 damage. So here comes another card for us. That is a Pumpkaboo, which I can probably manage to discard in some way, shape, or form. Uh, that also stopped her again from getting a crucial heal off of the Mega Gardevoir, saving us a turn. Now I do have a VS Seeker in the back to take care of the other one. It may seem a little odd, but I do see that I'm trying to take out the threat of Gardevoir. At the end of the day, Mega Gardevoir, if it gets healed up, it gets another free attack on me, which is not good. Now she's still got to take five prizes. I've got four attackers pretty much set up, and every time one of my Muse goes to the discard pile, I can set up that other Joltik now with the Steel Energy, and it's actually really crucial for me that I have got this consistent energy flow going around. Now she should be going for the attack here, taking out this Mew. This will net her another prize card, but it'll net us another opportunity to get some damage on that Whimsicott. Which again, due to the Night Marches, I'm not increasing my damage output because I'm not sacrificing them, but because Mew's attacks are so easily used, I'm not too threatened by this thing. It's more the repercussions of not dealing with, whoa, she's bringing back all those fairy energies with the energy recycler. She did lose quite a few. So there goes our Mew, which is unfortunate, but understandable. But with what we have, we are in a steady flow. We're going to throw up our Mew. And we grab another VS Seeker. So in case something bad happens, I can still net that thing out. We're going to go for our Lysander and pull out that other Whimsicott. Because again, I can't naturally take this thing out, but with two other Jiltics on the bench, I can easily set up my attackers to take her, take her out right now. And that is the main point, just to just set it up. So we are going to go with the Dimension Valley, because I can't attack right now without it. And we will go for the Night March, taking out this Whimsicott. And all she is left with is the Mega Gardevoir. We claim another prize, which is a Battle Compressor. Now, as long as I can take out this Mega Gardevoir, we will win this game, because that will net us two prize cards, which is all we've got left. We see a Spritzy hit the bench, which is fine. I'm not too, too threatened by that thing now. It's a little late in the party. Now, the way it looks, I'll be able to knock... She'll knock out my Mew, claim a prize. I'll come in with Joltik, do some damage. And then, with the VS Seeker, even if she tries to escape right now, I have it. I do believe I have this game because I have both Joltix being able to set up. And even if the Dimension Valley goes down now, I'm not worried about it because this is the last Mew I have. So with the Mews gone, Dimension Valley is kind of useless. Joltik will just come in. It's got a double colorless energy on one. I can set up the Steel Energy on the second. It should be okay. But I really do want to give it out to her. What an amazing performance she's done. Especially considering the fact she doesn't have Shaman in the deck. She doesn't have all these great utility cards just yet. She has put in such a fantastic match. Mega Gardevoir is an amazing card. And people really do underestimate it. I guess it's just because it's a little slow to start up. But we are going to throw up our Joltik right now. We're going to be able to go for the 
Ah, eh, we don't need a Starling Metaphone. Wow. Uh, we don't really need to play too much of anything. We just want to make sure that we do get that Steel Energy onto our Joltik. Only because it's the only way we can win this game. Uh, we can go for the Pumpkin Boot Drop. And we're going to go for a Night March, which will not knock out, but it'll do 140. And because I've got the VS Seeker in the back, regardless if she switches out or not, I do have this Guard of War. So she can try and switch out, stall the game out. But I do have a VS Seeker for Lysander, and that should be game. That should be game. Here comes an energy drop onto the Spritzy. She goes for the, the uh, evolution. And she drops a Xerneas as well. She is just making sure there are no other moves she can make. She knows she can take out this Joltik, which will put her down to two prizes, which is, again, a pretty good game. She goes for the Lysander on my Shaman. And takes it out! Nice play! That'll drop her down to one prize. She knows she doesn't have it, but you know what? She put in a fantastic game, you know, going down to one prize. What a fantastic match. We're going to go for that Night March. Knock out this Gardevoir. Fantastic plays from Lady Eon. What a game. All of our Night March were in the freaking prize. But, again, give it out to her. She put up a fantastic battle. And I do highly recommend you guys check out the next one. We should be playing my friend Jacob, who is the actually the creator of this Night March deck. I think he'll be playing Delphox, so that'll be really, really interesting to see how that plays out. But, again, make sure you give yourselves a shout out for Lady On. She played fantastic. She put up a fantastic match. I'm saying fantastic just as much as uh, Viola does in X and Y. But, uh, make sure to check out the next episode. Make sure to check out the deck analysis if for whatever reason you missed it. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. But until then, time out.